We have already learned some equations that we can use to describe objects moving in a straight line with constant velocity. So let's say we have this person moving along the x-axis with constant velocity. One way to describe that motion is to say that the velocity of that person is the change in the position divided by the time interval during which that change in position occurred. Another way to describe that is like this. We say that at time t0, the position is x0. At time t1, the position is x1. We assume the person is moving with constant velocity. So we can then say that the position at the later time, x1, equals the position at the earlier time, x0, plus the velocity multiplied by the change in time. Both of those equations you have seen before. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new equation. This equation gives you a way of describing the average velocity between two moments of interest. The average velocity between two moments of interest is the change in position that occurred between those moments of interest divided by the time interval. Now this equation down here might look like this equation up here. But here's the difference. This equation up here gives you the actual velocity, but only in instances where the velocity is constant. This equation down here is always true, but it doesn't give you the actual velocity. It only gives you the average velocity over some process. <clears throat> uh, anyways, we're going to do an example problem now. So in this problem, we have a guy on a motorcycle, and he's going to leave a house going towards the right. Now, the motorcycle leaves the house at time t0 equals 0, traveling 20 meters per second. And then at some unknown time and position, the motorcycle rider is going to switch to 35 meters per second. The motorcycle covers a total distance of 500 meters in 20 seconds. So we want to find the time and position of the switch. OK, so we're going to go back to our handout that we used in the previous example problem. So this is procedure two, kinematics problems with constant velocity or acceleration. This is available at the top of the module in the module introduction. OK, so step one, draw a clear sketch illustrating the problem. OK, there we have a beginning of, of a sketch but that sketch is going to have to be developed. Step two, draw a coordinate system. So let's put in an x-axis. Step three, identify and number the moments of interest. Step two, draw a coordinate system. The coordinate system should have a clearly marked origin. So Let's just make this the x-axis. Now we also need to put in an origin. So let's say that the origin is at this location over here where the motorcycle leaves the house. Okay, step three, identify and number the moments of interest. So let's go through the problem. So if you read through the problem, what would be those moments where some particular event happens that we're going to have to analyze as we work through the problem? Now here, I would invite you to pause the video, figure out what the moments of interest are, and then draw those moments of interest into your sketch. Okay, so the first moment of interest will be where the motorcycle leaves the house. So we already drew that. We'll call that moment of interest zero. Then there's going to be a moment of interest out here somewhere where there is the switch from 20 meters per second to 35 meters per second. So this is moment one. This is the moment of the switch. And then our last moment of interest is going to be where the motorcycle completes the process 
having covered the full 500 meters. So let's put in that last moment of interest over here somewhere. We'll call this moment of interest too. Okay, so that was step three. Now we have step four. At each moment of interest, write down the appropriate kinematic variables. You have option A for constant velocity, option B for constant acceleration. So we haven't learned about acceleration yet. Now this isn't exactly a constant velocity problem because we have one constant velocity from moment zero to moment one and then a different constant velocity from moment one to moment two. So not really a constant velocity problem, but we can at least say it's piecewise constant. So let's go ahead and see what this has to say and do that. Okay, so next to each moment of interest, write down symbols to denote time and position, write the velocity off to the side. Okay, so... Before I continue, let me go back into here and indicate that moment two here is where the motorcycle completes the process. Okay, so anyways, let's do what the sheet said and put in symbols to indicate time and position at each of those moments of interest. So at moment zero, we would have time zero and position zero. At moment one, we would have time one and position one. And at moment two, we would have time two and position two. The sheet also says, write the velocity off to the side. So what I'm gonna do is indicate that we have two constant velocities. So as we go from moment zero to moment one, Let's say that we have velocity V01. And as we go from moment one to moment two, let's call that velocity V12. Okay, so step five. So for those variables whose values are known, we're going to write that into the diagram. So here I would invite you to pause the video again, go through the given information, and where one of these values is stated, just put that into the figure. All right, so let's go through and put in the information now. So it, it tells us that the motorcycle leaves the house at time zero. We can put that in. We have already decided that the origin is here. We can put that in. Now we don't know the time and position of the switch. That's what the problem is asking for. So we leave those blank. And then the motorcycle completes the process when the time is 20 seconds and the, and the position is 500 meters. We are also given the velocity for that first part and that velocity for the second part. So I can put those in 20 meters per second and 35 meters per second. Okay, so that's the setup part. Now we get to equation six. Write down the equations that you will use to solve for the unknown variables. Okay, so we have two unknowns here. We have the time of the switch and the position of the switch. That is two unknowns. So we're going to need two equations. Now let's look at the equation we have over here that applies to constant velocity processes. This relates the time and position at moment one to the time and position at moment zero. Can we just take this equation as written and apply it to this problem? Well, we can because we have a constant velocity all the way from moment zero to moment one. So I'm just gonna take this equation and copy it over here. So I have x1 equals x0 plus v t1 minus t0. And in this problem, I'm calling the velocity from moment 0 to moment 1 v01. 
Okay, so that's one equation. Now we need another one. Maybe pause the video here and see if you can figure out what that other one would be. Okay, so this equation should apply anytime we have a constant velocity process. When we go from moment zero to moment one, that's a constant velocity process, so we can use the equation. How about when we go from moment zero all the way to moment two? Is that a constant velocity process? Well, no, it's not because the velocity changes in the middle. How about when we go from moment one to moment two? So from moment one to moment two, that is a constant velocity process. So we can use the equation again, but we're going to change the subscripts. We're going to change the zeros to ones and the ones to twos so that we are applying that same equation to the one to two process. Okay, so taking that same equation, but changing the subscripts, I have x2 equals x1 plus v times t2 minus t1, and the velocity from moment one to moment two, we're calling that v12. Okay, so looking at that first equation, our unknowns are x1 and t1. And looking at the second equation, our unknowns are x1 and t1. So we have two equations and two unknowns. Let's number those, one and two. Now, when we solve in a situation where there are two unknowns and two equations, we like to solve for one of the variables in the simpler equation and then substitute into the more complicated equation. Okay, so which of these two equations is simpler? Well, if you look at the upper equation, that's zero and that's zero. So when you zero out x zero here and t zero here, then that simplifies the equation quite a bit. And what do you know? x1 has already been solved for here. So can you see that you can take this expression here, x1 equals v01 t1, just stick that into here, and then you will have one equation with one unknown that you can then solve for symbolically. And then once you have solved symbolically, you can put the numbers in along with units at the last step. So again, I'd invite you to try that on your own before continuing with the video. Okay, so continuing with the algebra, we're gonna do one into two. That gives us x2 equals x1, but we are substituting for x1, v01, t1, and then this term plus v12, t2 minus t1. Okay, the one unknown in this equation we're trying to solve for is t1. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Let's just distribute that v12 across the parentheses. So now I have v01 t1 plus v12 t2 minus v12 t1. Okay, so notice two terms that have the T1. So let's group those terms. Now, actually, let's take that V12 T2 and move it to the left where it picks up a minus sign. So I then have X2 minus V12 T2 over on the left. Now, if you look at the remaining two terms, then those both have a T1, and then that T1 can be factored out, which gives T1 times v01 minus v12. Okay, so now I can solve for t1 by taking this parentheses here and moving it down to the left. And as I do that, I'm also going to switch sides to give me t1 equals x2 minus v12 t2, all of that over v01 minus v12. Now we can make the substitutions. T1 equals X2, 500 meters, minus V12, 35 meters per second, times T2, 20 seconds, and V01, 
20 meters per second minus V1 to 35 meters per second. I get 13.3 seconds. A 13.3 is the numerical value, but let's do our unit checking. So notice that seconds cancel seconds here. So clearly the unit of the numerator is meters. And in the denominator, both terms have units of meters per second. So we have meters divided by meters per second, cancel the meters, one over seconds in the denominator, that flips over to give us seconds for our unit as we would expect. Okay, so now we have T1 equals 13.3 seconds. I'm going to put that back into the original figure. Now we want to get X1, and we can get X1 by taking T1 and putting it back into equation one. So using equation one, we have X1 equals V01 T1, V01 20 meters per second, T1 13.3 seconds. And if you put that into your calculator, you will get 266 meters. Although if you had carried extra digits in the intermediate steps, that will probably come out to be 267. Uh, anyways, but remember that earlier I showed you the formula for average velocity. And I want to just squeeze in a little calculation using the average velocity formula. So there is a secret part B to the problem, which is to find the average velocity for the entire process. So to do that, we just use the formula for average velocity, V average equals delta X over delta T. And the change in position for the entire process would be 500 meters minus zero. In other words, 500 meters. And the change in time for the entire process, 20 seconds minus zero, that's 20 seconds. 500 divided by 20 is 25. And the unit, as we would expect, is meters per second.